Hi there. Welcome to our Sitecore Cortex series. In this episode, we dive into some of the features that are available for data scientists, data analysts, and developers. So inside of Sitecore Cortex, we know that everything is data-driven. And this becomes even more so when you start thinking about trying to drive value with machine learning. So we've spent a long time trying to find what's the right architecture for machine learning in Sitecore so that our customers and partners can take advantage of that wealth of experience data that they've been collecting. Now, for the next few minutes, we're going to walk through features that the new Sitecore Cortex machine learning framework provides in 9.1 and how you can take advantage of this new and powerful tooling. To start off with, I'd like to just show a quick quote from our chief data scientist, Marcos. I think this really frames what we're trying to solve as a problem. We know that we need data. We know that we need to be able to access it. And we need to have options, the ability to bring our own tools into the process. When we talk about data, it really is a key piece of this whole solution. So with XDB and XConnect, you've got this capability to track these large amounts of data about your user behavior. But at that scale of data, working by hand doesn't make sense anymore. So now's that time you have to start leveraging that data and let a machine help you understand the data. Coming back to what I was saying about creating value. Now Sitecore Cortex is gonna give you that ability so that your data science tools and skills can come into the platform and surface of value. Now to support all those marketing features that are being developed, Sitecore Cortex has an underlying technical foundation, allows for focusing in on the algorithms and the model training that's required. Now, before any marketer can get valuable insights, someone's going to need to go and develop an algorithm to process large amounts of data and determine an outcome. And this is where the new Cortex processing engine comes into play. You have the ability to distribute processing of your XDB data at scale bring your own algorithm, bring your own data, and you can retrain in the background to ensure up-to-date predictions. Now this engine can be used to do model training, model storage, scoring, all in the background, and allow you to build new marketer features, leveraging your tools, your models, and your algorithms. So what does distributed processing look like in the Sitecore Cortex engine? Well. It kind of starts off with data coming in through XConnect or some other source. Then XConnect or some other system can raise an event through the message bus to kick off the processing. At this point, the processing engine starts managing the coordination, taking the data, getting the workers kicked off. And as it goes along, it also manages the communications with the machine learning server. Finally, Events get raised around the status and results of all those workers that have been running. And those results of the processing then get sent out for storage or consumption, depending on what output you want to do. For example, you might want to go and update an XDB contact with the result of a predictive outcome algorithm. Now, if we want to look at how training works, from an ML point of view, it's all about firing data sets at an algorithm. We want to ask that algorithm to produce some results and then evaluate those results against another set of data so that you end up with a training data set and a validation data set. What you're hoping to achieve at the end of this isn't necessarily the most accurate prediction for every single data point in your training data set, because if you get a little too precise, you can actually get what's called overfitting. You want to be getting to the point that's accurate enough. Now to train models with Sitecore's processing engine, we use something called training workers. Now these workers can retrieve data specific to the training task and then integrate with Microsoft Machine Learning Server to execute algorithms. That resulting trained model can then be stored for evaluation and then used by other workers. Now in order to run training, you need to get data into the right format for the algorithm. And that's what we call projection. Now we've introduced a projection framework to make it simpler to convert the data, which is in most cases, XConnect object graph data. And to take that into more of a tabular format, which is what most of the machine learning algorithms accept. 
Now, getting your projections right does take a bit of time and a bit of effort. You need to get in, understand what format the data needs to be in, which data needs to be uh, important to it, what data isn't important. And you need to go through this at least a little bit and do a couple of iterations before you're going to get it correct. Now here, this is a typical chain example. So if you wanted to train a model, you're going to go through a process of projecting data. Then the data needs to get merged. And then finally, once you have the merged data, you can actually train on top of this. Now in this diagram, the arrows show process flow between tasks in a chain. The way the processing engine works is that all of the tasks rely on dependencies. So they need a prerequisite task to complete. It's kind of like every single worker has the ability to run multiple tasks and the task can say, hey, before I can go, I need X to finish. So in this case, let's say a merge task, it's waiting for the projection task to finish. So it's not going to be able to go until that happens. So the engine kind of works by having a task provider look at the status of all the tasks. And so when a task agent's available and asks for work, it can look and say, oh, this one has all of its prerequisites met. It's checked off all its boxes. You can run this now. Allowing that to chain through and we can build more and more complex chains throughout the entire framework makes it extremely flexible for you. So when you string all of this together, you're going to be extracting some data from your data source. In our case, this is usually XDB. You then project that out, transform it into a format that's going to be required for the training. You run your training until you get an accurate enough model. You save the results of that so you can run predictions. You run those predictions. Then when you want to try to optimize, you start going at it again. One of the things you need to do when you have these decisions automated by the machine is you have to validate that the decisions the machine are making are accurate enough. Are they giving you the business results you need? Now over time, even if you're correct on day one when you launch it, your needs are gonna change. So if you think about what campaign activities are running right now versus what campaign activities might run around a Black Friday, how different is the model going to look to interpret that? You might also have cases where a landing page is important. So your landing page might have to change based on the campaigns you're running. So this becomes an ongoing process. A lot of experimentation. There's going to be a level of how generic you can be, but you're going to need to iterate this and monitor results of your algorithm. Remember, science is experimentation. We are going to be looking at this scientifically. You need to be able to analyze and you need to be able to adjust. So hope you're ready for that. Thanks so much for listening. Stay tuned for more episodes in our Psychor Cortex series.